There have been some truly difficult questions in this section, but this one, the second to last question, 21 out of 22, is extremely easy. You must, must, must get this right because it involves our most basic strategy, plug points into equations. And that's obvious. Now, first of all, we clearly have equations, right? Look at the answer choices, they're equations, so we would be looking for points. And very often we have these story questions, they give us points. They don't call them X comma Y, but they're points. And so we just need to learn how to pull them out of the story. The most obvious point to me is this one. The total cost for five hours of repair is $400. So the X is the number of hours, and we're supposed to get out 400. That's, that's literally as simple as it gets in my mind of how they're gonna give you a point. So why don't we just try that? Let's plug in five for X and see if we get 400. So 60 times five plus 100. Well, 60 times five is 300. 300 plus 100 is 400. So that looks good. Now, it might not be right. There might be multiple answers here that give us the right thing. So we gotta, we gotta double check. But let's go down the line. 60 times five plus 220. Well, that's again, 300, but now plus 220 is 520. So that's not 400, so that's wrong. 80 times five though, well, that is 400. So that works too. I expected this. This is the second to last question, so it wasn't gonna be that easy, but that's okay, because now we can still eliminate um, choice D because 400 plus 220 is 620. So that's right away two choices that are wrong. Now I would love to use another point and very often when we do these questions, the, the point that is best is the zero point, the starting point. But this story is a little quirky, right? It says they charge 220 for the first two hours of repair and then an hourly fee for each additional hour. So, and especially at the end, they tell us this function only works where X is greater than or equal to two. So we can't choose zero. It's telling us that zero is out of the range for these particular um, uh, uh, equations, but two is fair game, right? I mean, they tell us it's 220 for the first two hours. So that also is a point, right? That's the point two, 220. So we already got rid of B and D. Let's just try A and C over again. So A would be 60 times two plus 100. Well, 60 times two is 120 plus 100 is 220. So that looks good. And then trying C, 80 times two, oh, uh, that's 160, not what I want. So there you go, A is the answer. This is so simple because we don't need to think abstractly about the story and try to deconstruct what's going on. This is plug points into equations at its best. And this is why when things are simpler, you should really try to get in the habit of using this, uh, this strategy, even if it's not the most efficient, so that when this kind of stuff comes up, you're ready to go. For me, like I said at the beginning, this is so obviously the, this strategy that I would never have thought about for more than a split second. Okay, it's very obvious there are equations, so I'm hunting for points, and I just see right away that in these sentences they're giving me points. They're just not saying that they're points, but they are points, and so without hesitation I'm plugging them in, and within 30 seconds I am getting choice A confidently on a very, very difficult question according to the SAT, but very easy for you.